Hi, my name is Jan Dabowskis. I'm councilwoman elect for the city of Scottsdale. Uh, my address is on record. Thank you, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and council members. Thank you, Mr. Smith, for bringing your business to Scottsdale. We value Axon and we value what you bring to us. Um, I have spent time with the police. I have seen your, um, your cameras. I've seen your tasers in action. And there is no doubt that you bring great, tremendous value to the city. But that doesn't change the resident concern in my overwhelming victory in July, and then again, an overwhelming victory in November. I knocked on 4,000 doors. I personally took signatures from 1,000 residents. You know the first thing they said to me? Can you make the apartment stop? That's what residents want. Residents want the apartments to stop. Airport advisory, zero to seven. I don't see those concerns addressed here. That's concerning. The airport is a valuable member of our community, too. I'd like to see you address those concerns that the airport brought up. But I'd also like to say, we have a lot of apartments coming in, 12 to 15,000 by some estimates, 3,000 in that area. So the residents are saying, hey, wait a minute. I live in DC Ranch. I'm saying, I use Pima, I use Hayden. Hey, wait a minute, you're changing my area, you're changing my neighborhood. This is Scottsdale. Everybody who lives here is really proud. They're really excited to live in Scottsdale, Arizona. They chose Scottsdale. They invested in Scottsdale. We did not invest in Austin. We did not invest in Seattle. We did not invest in Silicon Valley. Scottsdale's different, and we want to stay that way. I urge you to vote no. Thank you. Good evening. Mayor Ortega, council members, name is Bob Pejman, address is on the record. And look, Axon is a great company. I own the stock, it's a great product. And the development is a good development, maybe if it was in a different place and a different time. So this is not about Axon. This is about certain council members here who made certain promises in the past. And those promises now relate to their vote tonight. So I'm talking about Solange, I'm talking about Tom, and I'm talking about Betty. You guys ran in 2018 and 2020, and you made the promises to save us from the evils of the Jim Lane Council. And what I mean by the evils is the upzoning. Remember, Betty? Stop the upzoning. So, you know, if I look at the, the Jim Lane Council, the largest development that they ever approved was the Entrada. Entrada is 700 apartments. It's a massive development is almost like a mini city. To put this in perspective, Axon, this development is almost three times that. Just put that in perspective. So if back in 2018 and 2020, I told anybody that you guys in a lame duck session after you know the result of the last election and after you know the 14,000 apartments in the pipeline, still vote to upzone almost 2,000 units, nobody would believe me. So what's the legacy you're gonna leave behind? Are you going to be remembered as the people who saved the preserve from the DDC, but then went on to urbanize Scottsdale and, in essence, sell out its soul? People didn't elect you to turn this place into a tech hub. They elected you to protect the character of Scottsdale. And you should really remember why you're here. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mike, Michael Schaefer. Um, I'm a resident and lives near the location. I'm a, a precinct committeeman in LD4. My uh, precinct is very close to this area. Mayor, City Council, you asked us to give a moment at the beginning to warn toward, warn toward countries in the beginning. I ask you to give time to praying about our torn apart Scottsdale. It's the city and big government companies against the people is what it feels like to us residents who are tax players. Accepting Axon, Axon is a great company, um, but remember, Council, you represent the people, not big companies. We the people are sick of big business, partnering with government and being supported by legislators who don't represent the people. Scott Steele's torn between the people's will and some on the city council, you know who you are. Did Axon approach the Indian Reservation? There's a lot of land there. Beyond that, we have tons of 
acres of desert available to build on that doesn't drop it right in the middle of a high density area. High density apartment complexes that we've been seeing over and over and over again go against the residents and taxpayers. Look around the room, uh, Councilman. The people accepting Axon employees are here sending a clear message, no, vote no. Why would Councilman go against the people is a question I have. We the people see this density destroying our cities, our favors being given, Ought event investigations occur? We no longer trust our government, or from the school board to the federal level and the past presidency. We don't trust you, council members, in part. We need to do what's right for the Scottsdale residents. Move it to the outskirts. Please see if the Indian Reservation's interested, but we, the people, if you care about us, don't want it. We ask you to vote no, N-O. Thank you. James Davis, representing Coalition of Greater Scottsdale. Uh, I'm on the board of directors. And uh, COG's mission is fair and uh, appropriate land use for those uh, parts of Scottsdale uh, that we have uh, development undertaking. Uh, I am also a resident, obviously, of Scottsdale. What, as, uh, sh shortly before the uh, meeting this uh, weekend, we just, uh, Co the COGS board distributed the latest information that we had on this project and requested rezoning. We also polled our members as to their opinions on this proposal. And while the time was short, we had a fair response, and the 85% of the response was they are members are opposed to these additional residential units. The original proposal uh, for this land was, uh, mixed, uh, was not mixed use. It was for commercial and industrial use. Uh, Axon knew this when they purchased the land, and now they're trying to rezone it for residential use. There are already too many apartments in the area planned and uh, and zoned for residential use. And uh, adding this, these additional, now uh, almost 1,900 units, will add to the burden of the high density residential units in the area. So our, our members are opposed to this expansion of residential units. Uh, we'd, we'd love to have Axon in the community, but we don't want these additional apartments. The uh, Scottsdale future infrastructure cost to support the additional 1,900 units, residential units, will be an additional burden on the Scottsdale taxpayers. Thank you, sir. You're right at two minutes. Yeah. Thank you very okay. much, sir. So we respectfully request City Council not grant the zoning request. Mayor, City Council. I'm Ginny Bertensino, and I live at 10,005 East Mission Lane in Scottsdale. I've been a Scottsdale homeowner for over 37 years. I love Axon. Back in the early 2000s, I successfully bidded on a taser at the 100 Club of Arizona meeting, and it was awesome. It looked like a toy. It was clear. It had all the wires in it, so that the bad guy goes, oh, look at the, lady with, the old lady with the gun. Well, then kabam. And then back in 2014, in June, I attended the Scottsdale Sunrise Rotary Club meeting where your vice president introduced the body cams. And I was so impressed that I bought your stock, which has gone crazy. And I, I love you for that. Um, I was very, very impressed. Uh, in fact, I purchased the stock and then you guys do so many good things. You've really taken law enforcement to a whole new level. But I'm very disappointed that you feel the need to build a 15-minute city within an already overcrowded city, where there are literally thousands of apartments already approved by this council that haven't even been built yet, where your proposed project requires rezoning 
it's not even practical or fair to the other businesses who have complied with the current zoning laws, where its residents are being asked to cut back on water usage, while five members of this council have run wild approving thousands of new apartments that require additional water usage, where today our traffic and air pollution are literally so bad that our city streets and freeways have become parking lots and residents with breathing problems are asked to stay indoors. Your multi-use project just is not making sense for Scottsdale. We love the fact that you're headquartered here, but not the rest of it. We have too many apartments, too much congestion. I urge you to vote no. Thank you. I'm Gabrielle Hitchcock, a resident of, of Scottsdale. Um, when I first moved to Arizona in 95, the most astonishing part was seeing the, just the just incredible landscape, the, mount, the majestic mountains. It was like I was surrounded by them, and, and I just loved every minute of it. Um, Today, however, I see less and less of them, and it's because of giant buildings and now an endless supply of apartments. Builders don't care about our limited resources, our view, our quality of life. They only care about the money they can make off of it. If they cared, they wouldn't have tried to push it through a lame duck session. The citizens of Scottsdale do care. I've knocked doors, I've electioneered, I have kids and a dog, so I talk to all different types of people. They love Scottsdale but they see it slipping away. We see some parts of Scottsdale are protected, dog parks are added instead of buildings, in those same parts where many of you live, that you get to enjoy. We are asking for all of Scottsdale to be protected. This builder thinks our city should look like Austin, that was, used to be the cool city to live in, but now has been overrun by developers like Exxon. Now Austin is ranked fifth amongst U.S. cities where people are actually leaving, among the reasons being stifling traffic. Some of you have been replaced by those that we hope will listen to us, to care about what we care about. You would have, if you would have just listened to us, you'd still have a job. Please don't leave office by hurting us again. Please vote no and let the next city council decide. Make the developers actually listen to us. Don't push this through in the shadows, but in the light. Let's not pave paradise to put up another apartment complex. Thank you. Hey. Good evening, uh, members of Scottsdale City Council and my fellow residents. Uh, my name is Mason Gates. Uh, I reside here in South Scottsdale. This is where I started my career. This is where I intend to end it. Um, tonight, I address you with a very clear message. The Axon development proposal in its current form represents a turning point for our city, uh, one that could certainly undermine the very values that make Scottsdale an exceptional place to live. So while I do respect um, you know, your, your investment thus far in our community and your commitment to public safety and the, the overwhelming, you know, message uh, of your company. Um, there's a good song called, You Can't Always Get What You Want by the Rolling Stones. And so, again, while I do respect the, the upfront investment and, you know, the attempts at community outreach over the last, um, you know, 15 months at, at least, um, it has become increasingly clear that my fellow residents do not want this development. I've said it before and I, I'll say it again, this is Scottsdale, we are not Phoenix. Uh, we're not Buckeye and we're not Mesa. We, we attract, we don't cater. Um, and that is ultimately what you're asking of the council and my fellow residents. Um, Axon knowingly purchased the land zoned industrial uh, with the sole intent of rezoning it um, to their liking. And so while you've seen numerous attempts tonight at Ethos, uh, unfortunately Scottsdale does not make empathy votes. And I, I've heard a lot about you know, wanting to mirror Austin and Seattle. I can't think of a single redeeming trait about either of those cities. And in fact, that, that's a big reason why I moved to Scottsdale in the first place is I didn't like the idea of living in a large city like that where they do have a lot of the issues that have been expressed by um, some of my colleagues here tonight. 
I've heard that Scottsdale is unaffordable and we lack inventory when that's simply false. We have thousands of apartments, we have thousands of houses. Uh, there's a, a ton of inventory actually um, available to any prospective purchaser or renter. Um, I also heard that cities have to grow. They really don't. They don't necessarily have to grow at, at this pace especially. Um, it's ultimately at the council's discretion. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and City Council. Um, you guys are not on point here tonight. You're forgetting the fact that this is only about one particular development. You guys are a phenomenal company. Really, you're a phenomenal company. The accolades that your employees have given, I want to see what that memo was that you guys sent around and say, hey, everybody show up. I mean, that must have been an awesome memo. This is the best turnout I have ever seen. Literally, I've been here many times. This isn't about your company in any way, shape, or form. It's about one project. It's about one development. You know, you guys are a tech company. It sounds like you want to turn into a land development company. I think you guys do a really, really good job with your tech development. I don't think you do a really good job with your land development. I think this is too big. I don't think it fits in with the area. I think you guys can do better. When you do, guys are doing tech stuff, literally stuff doesn't work out and you say, well, let's do it again. You guys have been doing it again. I think you should go back and do it again. Four of the members of this city council are not gonna be back here next year. They weren't voted in again because the citizens, the majority, don't want these big up developments. They don't want that word up zoning. So this city council literally shouldn't be voting on this because the citizens, the majority, have said, we don't want any more up zoning. I want your company here. Heck, if I was younger, I'd probably go apply for it and take some classes and learn how to work for your company. I mean, this is awesome. This is, this is the coolest thing that I've been in in the city council. So I don't want you guys to think that there's anything negative about it or your company. It's just this project. I think you guys can do better. Thank you. Good evening, members of the city council. I'm Susan McGarry. I live at 8074 East Teresa Drive in a community called Scottsdale Stonebrook 2. I'm on the board of the HOA and I'm here representing uh, we're an established community of 174 homes. So many of you heard this already, but I have to say it every time. And while sometimes our land is identified as multifamily, we are most certainly single family development from the 90s. Our prevailing concern with this proposal has always been the density, which did not change in the resubmittal. An 11th hour negotiation just noted um, reduced the number of units by 70 there's still 1,900 units proposed. However, I will say that some things in the resubmittal did change that address many of our community's concerns. For example, the roads, that's very significant to us. Removing the roundabout and maintaining Mayo Boulevard, which our community uses. Setbacks, distances have increased, landscaping's been improved, all of this to help protect our privacy and the height of the building nearest to us has been reduced. We really appreciate these changes. It's been a long haul for our, all of us, and we've had several people on the council working on our behalf and negotiating. However, <laughs> we would like to see the height of the building closest to us stipulated in terms of feet high and not stories to no more than 30 feet within the additional setback already included. I've shown this, is this on? Can you see that? Yeah? Okay, thanks. I've shown this several times. This is a three-story with whatever's on top there. Apartment development across Hayden Road, which is, I suppose, six lanes plus all that in between our neighborhood and them. The people in those apartments can see in the backyards of those people in Scottsdale Stormbrook right here in the front. This is what we've been trying to avoid the whole time. We just... This has been our whole argument. Please don't let this happen to us. Um, once it's done, it's done. It can't be undone. Um, if you stand at the back wall of the north side of our neighborhood and do a view cone out 450 feet, which I believe is the setback you're talking about, you would see about 20 feet 
of that lowest building still. And we did, we, and if we can see that building, which is apartments or condos, they can see us. They can see into our yards and our, and our living rooms and we, please don't let that happen. So that's what, the, two requests, um, please reduce the building height of that one closest to us. And second, I know you're, you're probably ready for this, we respectfully request that the council require Axon to significantly reduce the project's overall density to a level more suitable for its location next to a single family neighborhood. Thank you for the opportunity. Sandy, it's uh, Jim Haxby. Jim Haxby. 30 year resident of Scottsdale. Uh, I live at 7336 East Sunnyside Drive. Uh, as a career pilot, I question whether having 1,900 units, uh, uh, residential units in the influence area of the airport, if we've got a noise abatement agreement in place. But the other thing, we've got thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of apartments already in the pipeline approved. Uh, numerous number of those are within miles or less than a mile from this project. And uh, next week, we're going to discuss a sustainability plan for Scottsdale. We're worried about water. We're worried about how we get rid of the refuge, all those things. And it's when's it going to be time to stop and say, what's the effect of all that we've already approved and done? Traffic's got to be a nightmare. Uh, it's costing all the residents of Scottsdale something if we want a plumber, an electrician, a handyman, uh, our pool service, landscaper, whatever, their rates have got to go up because they're stuck in traffic half the day to do that. It's costing us all something. Our rates are going up because it's, it took me 10 minutes to get onto Cactus Road today from 73rd. And you sit there idling, wasting gas. Our, our insurance rates are going up because of this thing. Uh, you know, it's costing every resident of Scottsdale money, and that's why they're irate. You know, you guys put all these uh, great promises out there to protect us, but we're not following through. And that's upsetting to the residents of Scottsdale. I mean, that's what the last election told us. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Axby. Thank you. Uh, my name's Lee Martucci. I'm a resident of Scottsdale. I live in Stonebrook, too, the neighborhood that been discussed here. Um, I have to say to Rick and his team, it's, it's a very impressive uh, growth that you've had. The company does great things. I love your mission. Um, and, and really, I think Scottsdale uh, needs you guys here, wants you guys here. The problem is the density. So I just looked up... Uh, Facebook, which we compared here. Facebook is 250 acres. This is 47 acres. Facebook has 1,729 units. You're looking at 1,895. That's about six times the density of Facebook. It's also about four times the density of the other apartment complexes that are nearby, uh, the, the San Artis, complex, and it's about 11 times our little community of single-family homes, 174. So I got no pro I want, I want Axon here. I want Scottsdale to be proud of having Axon here. I just don't think this is the right location and the right project for this space. Thank you. Good, e good evening. <clears throat> My name is Catherine Daly, and thank you to the mayor and council members for allowing me to speak. Um, before you this evening about this proposal. I am a resident of Scottsdale Stromboot 2 neighborhood as well. I, um, Axon is a wonderful company. I love everything that I've heard and things that I already knew about Axon. And it's, it's just been made even more clear. But this is not about Axon. This is about land development and it's about the proper management of density. Um, Axon has not 
satisfied the mandatory criterion of establishing beyond reasonable doubt that the proposed residential and hotel development are in harmony with the character of the surrounding area. The surrounding area consists of 174 single family units on 38 acres. A multifamily development with 550 apartments on 30 acres. And offices and light industrial businesses in the perimeter center area. Contrast that with Axon's request to build now, which is 1,900 approximately dwelling units, plus a 425 key hotel on only approximately 37 acres. The mandatory cri criterion beyond reasonable doubt requires showing that the evidence supporting their proposal is so convincing that a reasonable, pers reasonable person would not reject it. By virtue of the, the multiple revisions submitted throughout this application process, including the present proposal, Axon itself is demonstrating that they have not and cannot satisfy the mandatory criterion of establishing beyond reasonable doubt that the residential and hotel developments are in harmony with the char character of the surrounding area. This is not to say that the headquarters are not in character. They are. It's the residential and the hotel development that is not. So based on the mandate of the citizens of Scottsdale in the most recent election to responsibly manage density. Thank you, Ms. DeLay. You've Use the two minutes. Sorry. Your time has expired. I urge you to vote against Thank this you. proposal. And Hi. Thank you. I am Tamara Golden. I'm a homeowner in the Stonebrook. And my question is really related to maybe your chief legal counsel and to Rick. You've been publicly, you've publicly stated that Axon will leave Arizona if the city council does not approve your project. Is it fair to suggest that this threat to relocate is more of a negotiation tactic than a reflection of regulatory or logistical challenges. And if the project is approved, your employees aren't gonna move in next week. So my question is, what policies are in place to protect employees from retaliation or discrimination if they raise concerns about housing conditions? If the apartments are primarily designed for young single professionals, how will Axon address the potential mismatch between this housing model and the needs of aging or family-oriented workforce? How do you reconcile a long-term investment in employee housing with the reality that employee turnover and evolving life stages may reduce the appeal of this housing option? Last week, you mentioned Austin, and today. Austin has a reputation for being a tech hub with a vibrant music and cultural scene. Do you believe Scottsdale has comparable infrastructure, demographics, or cultural foundation to support that vision? Scottsdale is known for its luxury tourism, golf courses, and quieter suburban atmosphere. How do you reconcile these differences with Austin's reputation as a bustling urban and tech hub? Thank you, and I urge you to vote no. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Patty Badnock, 40-year resident. It is a well-known overused tactic used by developers to maintain their up-zoned notions to brainstorm build-in favors addressing probable complaints that would still allow for their profit margin while ignoring the already approved density projects close by. This is another attempt to appease these rising issues of traffic by insisting that their live-work-play conglomerate will address overpopulation. This approval will further drive us into mass transit, compromising residents who live here to, who, who live here to give up, they're gonna now have to give up more of their freedoms to drive, park, and shop city-wide. The residents have no say. It is none of your business if you don't live close by wrong. The infrastructure costs the use of water, electricity, the roads we drive, et cetera, applies to all of us. Axon is a continued example for more of the same approvals to jack up height and density. In all fairness, to the majority of those who voted in the last election, 
This magnitude of development needs to be determined by the new council leadership the citizens at large voted in to replace. Any further density developments should no longer be standalone items, but how it affects the city at large. What we wish to maintain and keep needs to be determined by our newly elected council. Thank you. Good evening, council members and Mayor Ortega. My name is Margaret Schultz. I live in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I'm here representing Worker Power Institute, a nonpartisan nonprofit that focuses on making sure developers and local government are responsive to community needs and input. We are concerned with the $9.4 million in proposed infrastructure reimbursements included in the amended public infrastructure agreement. We don't believe taxpayer money should go to a corporation with expected revenue of over $2 billion this fiscal year. Back in 2020, the agreement between Axon and Scottsdale stipulated Axon needed to reach certain benchmarks within five years to be eligible for the money. At the time, council member Tom Durham, then candidate, asked, why are we giving them nine million when so many Scottsdale businesses are suffering and we have a lot of businesses that are closing and shuttering their doors? Well, that was in reference to businesses struggling during the pandemic. I think the question still stands if a large company deserves the kind of handout over small businesses. We don't believe there should be an extension of this deadline. Council member, then candidate, Benny Janik, has also raised concerns about the infrastructure reimbursements, pointing out how libraries and senior center services are already impacted by a tight budget. Residents have also named many concerns, from the size of the project to traffic and water use. We ask that you listen to the concerns of those most impacted and vote no. Thank you. I couldn't help but uh, see how the support for the action is. How many people here from Axon? Raise your hand. A ton of people here. Okay. How many people? So right now it would be great if um, they've been talking about how great it is to work for Axon, how great their company is, and it is great. I used to carry a taser myself, all right? So um, I have no problem with that. But we're not talking about their business right now. And basically everyone coming up here, we're not going to say their business stinks, you know. No. The company's bad? No. I think 1,400 apartments, we, have, we come up here with 250 apartments and we're, and we're screaming about it. The, and we're not getting, we've had basically no support from city council for four years. And I'm not being mean, but that's why there was an overwhelming clean sweep in this last election. And part of it is you didn't follow your oath or you'd still be sitting up there, okay? I probably, I would have voted for you, all right? So tonight, you have a chance to do something, do something the right way, all right? So one question I have for Axon. It's, they want to set a campus, and I've been listening to this. It got me off the couch tonight. 45 minutes ago, I was watching this at home. I, I had to come in and at least support my colleagues here and support the city, all right? So I have 1,900 apartments. Does this mean that with their campus, that all 1,900 apartments is for their employees only, yes or no? Could anyone answer? It's no. So basically what we've done is we got a great company, okay, and they have a lot of people coming in, build the hotel too, all for it. We do not need 1,900 more apartments in this city. We have way too many right now in the valley down here. And all right, to be honest with you, we have none up in the DC ranch area because you started at Sonar and Desert Act, which is outstanding. But we'd like to start the Shea Corridor Act and have the same, the same opportunities and vote for what we want. All right, why don't you do this and put this up in that, those areas and so we don't have as much congestion in this area. So um, I really don't see how you can carry the water for the developers and the business people. Thank you, sir. And not um, Thank you. help the citizens of the city out. Thank, Thank you. you very much for, for uh, coming here.